Imagine driving down a nice highway at night, enjoying the ride with very, very minimal light. And as you slowly, slowly drive, you come to a cliff. And under that cliff is just deep water for as far and as long as you can see. And someone pushes you off into that water. Now I want to ask you, do you know how to swim? And do you know how to save yourself if you were to fall into that water? And well, who pushed you? Was it your friends? Someone that you trusted? Or was it you? A lot of times life will take you down a ride and throw you down a ditch. A lot of times life will take you on a ride and throw you in the ocean. And as beautiful as a ride may seem, that doesn't mean that the ride is everything. So if you make the ride everything, you will fall every time. Because when you only focus on the little enjoyments of life, the little worldly things, and you don't look at what's going to happen after that, you come to a big collapse. Because you don't know what you're setting yourself up for. And a lot of times, this has a lot to do with our circle. Maybe you made friends who psychologically and physically maybe abused you. Maybe they emotionally gaslit you. Maybe today you don't know who you are. As Muslims, a lot of our values are missing. That's just the truth about us today. You know, we're all working on it. We're all on our own journey. And that's 100% understandable. But growing up, so many of us don't learn why we practice what we practice. So our faith becomes an empty template. And as people come and go in our life, they put their own opinions and their own thoughts and their own values on our template. So when time comes and you're down in that ditch or you're down in the deep of the sea and you don't know how to climb up, you don't know how to swim, you're sitting there thinking, what are my values? What are my moral compasses? How am I going to get out of this? I'm in the worst depression of my life. I feel like there's nothing to save me. Where do you turn? First you turn to, you know, of course, the lifestyle of party and drugs and whatnot, and then eventually you turn to God. And if you never knew who God was, well, how are you going to call out to him? Of course, we have all had a shortcoming in our introduction with God growing up, whether it's through your parents or whether you're a revert. We may have had shortcomings in our introduction with God. But that doesn't mean your conclusion with God has to be short. That doesn't mean your conclusion with God has to be someone, you know, completely that you never knew who he was, that you never knew who you were. Your conclusion with God doesn't have to be a mystery. It can be the most beautiful story if you let it be. The relationship that you have with God is a relationship that only one person messes up and only one person leaves every time. That's us. Every single time you decide to sin, you decide to mess up, you decide to just switch your entire lifestyle and you're like, oh, I'm done. I, I'm tired of praying. I'm done doing all these things. I'm going to go and do it what I want. That, that's your choice. That's your choice. God, God never left. And every single time that you're sitting there in despair and you're just saying, God, go easy on me and make this end. God is always there. God has never left you. So do not fear and do not grieve because as long as you have Allah with you, who can hurt you? But when you fall into that ditch of the deep of the ocean and you don't know who Allah is and you don't know the introduction, and you've never met, you know, the grace of God and the mercy of those things. And it just seems like a far away story tale. It just seems like, you know, a preacher's talk. It just seems magical. It just seems unreal. It just seems like something you cannot attain because, well, if you haven't had an introduction or a conversation with God your entire life, how are you supposed to call out to him when you're in help? And when you're in danger and when you're going through the worst times of your life. Well, I'm going to tell you right now that it doesn't matter what you've done. And it doesn't matter how bad it's been. It doesn't matter, you know, whatever it is. As long as you've sincerely repented and moved on. God will help you swim when you don't know how to swim. God will help you get out of that ditch. Even if you don't know how you will get out of that ditch. As long as you keep faith in him. All of these things seem things that you just hear preachers talk about and you're kind of like... Well, they're, they're people with bigger titles. They know what they're talking about. Well, I'm telling you as a normal person, there's nothing proprietary to me. There's nothing special to me. I'm a random little 18-year-old. I don't have anything to my name to tell you for a fact that, you know, I'm someone like this, I'm someone like that. No, I'm just telling you that God has never been for those that have titles that are more elite. God is for everyone. God's love is for everyone. And that is what makes Islam so beautiful. Your race, your background, your ethnicity, your anything doesn't matter. In the eyes of God, you being born into a family that probably wasn't Muslim and now you are Muslim doesn't make you any less. It doesn't make you any less. So whatever ditch you're going through, whatever depression you're going through, whatever ocean that you're swimming through that you don't see the sign through, believe that God will help you the same way he helped Yunus alayhi salam in the belly of a whale. In the belly of a whale, bro, 
if he can help our beautiful prophet, peace be upon him, may Allah be pleased with him, prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, through all his hardships in life, why won't he be able to help you? And when Musa al-Islam ran away as a fugitive under the law, he did not know that, you know, eventually he's going to have a job and he's going to get married. And No. No one knew. Except God. And when you believe that God knows best for you, you will, inshallah, always attain good things from God. Stop viewing God as one that wants to punish you and hurt you and harm you and hate you. Well, what will God get from those things? Anyway, what will God get from those things when God has never, ever needed, wanted, or a anything from us? Us as human beings are so limited. What are we going to give God? And what is God going to get from watching us, you know, suffer? No, it's not a punishment. It's not a punishment if it brought you closer to God. So to those who are drowning in the middle of an ocean and they don't see the way out and they feel like every single thing around them is out there to hurt them and you feel like you're going to drown, it starts with the wakal. It starts with a firm faith that God will get you out of that ocean even if you don't see a way out. Just like when Yunus a.s. was in the belly of a whale, he too got out. And that is all by the grace of God. Start trusting that God wants good for you, not bad for you. Start trusting that God doesn't get anything from hurting you. He is already all-powerful. He's already, you know, the kings of everything. He doesn't need anything from us. He doesn't need anything from seeing you cry. He doesn't like to see you suffer. Every single little thing that you go through is going to help you in this world and in the next, if you allow it. Keep the wakil in your heart. Keep firm faith. God is always with those who are patient.